So now in this session we are going to learn about ionic polarization. Now this ionic polarization will take place in ionic dielectrics. So let us consider a ionic crystal. So let us assume that let us consider an NaCl crystal. So it is having Na plus and Cl minus ions. So in the equilibrium position their distance will be some x. But whenever you apply some electric field onto this ionic crystal then what happens is the positive ion moves in the field direction and the negative ion moves in the opposite direction. So here based upon the equilibrium position the positive ion moves a distance x1 and the negative ions moves a distance x2. Okay. So here whenever we are applying the electric field onto the dielectric material. So these ions are get separated and dipoles are formed. And this phenomena is known as ionic polarization. Now we are going to find out the ionic polarizability. Because, because of the application of the electric field. The dipoles are created in the ionic crystal. Hence their dipole moment is directly proportional to the electric field. And to remove the proportionality constant we can write a constant like alpha which is nothing but polarizability. So here the polarization takes place in the ionic crystals. We can call this alpha i as ionic polarizability. we are going to find out this ionic polarizability and then we can write the expression for the ionic polarization value okay so here for that purpose we can take an NaCl crystal so because of the application of electric field these ions get separated uh, and uh, this positive ion from the equilibrium distance it gets separated moves a distance x1 and negative ions moves a distance x2. So now we will write the expression separately for sodium positive ion and chlorine ion. So first we will write the Lorentz force acting on the sodium positive ion crystal. So that F1 we can call it as and let us assume that E will be the charge on the positive and negative ions. F1 is equal to E, E and on the chlorine ion F2 is equal to E into E. Now because of this, uh, so now these ionic crystals uh, whenever we apply the some force uh, they are uh, get separated. But at the same time restoring force will also act onto these crystals uh, to bring back these ions to their original position. Hence the restoring force acting on the sodium uh, ion can be written as uh, k1 into x1 as k1 is the uh, force constant and restoring force acting on the chlorine ion can be written as k2 into x2 okay so now this will be the ee k1 x1 and ee k2 x2 and now coming to the at equilibrium position so the applied force and the uh, restoring force both will be equal so hence E E is equal to K1 X1 and X1 is equal to we will get E E by K1. And here E E is equal to K X2 and K2 is equal to E E by sorry not K2 X2 is equal to E E by K2. Okay so now we know that so let M1 is the mass of the sodium ion M2 is the mass of the chlorine ion and there is a relation between the constant force constant mass and the frequency. So that is nothing but k is equal to m into omega square. Omega is the frequency. So as per this one we can write k1 is equal to m1 omega square and here k2 is equal to m2 omega square. So therefore x1 value becomes e e by m1 omega square and x2 value become e e by m2 omega square.
so now due to the application of electric field this positive and negative ions get separated and the total distance between these two ions will be x1 plus x2 and the dipole moment is equal to the charge onto the ions into the distance between the two ions x1 plus x2 and we have derived the x1 value is nothing but e e by m1 omega square and x2 value is e e by m2 omega square so now mu is equal to e e if you can take it common by omega square we can write it as 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 so mu is equal to e square by omega square into 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 into e now if we can compare this equation with mu is equal to alpha i into e so the electro ionic polarizability value can be written as e square by omega square into 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 and ionic polarization ionic polarization p is equal to n into mu and p is equal to n into alpha i into e so p is equal to n into e square by omega square 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 into e so this is the expression for the ionic polarization value so in the same way we can determine the expression for the orientational polarization orientational polarization will takes place particularly in the polar dielectrics so in the polar dielectrics already the permanent dipoles are present so in polar dielectrics the permanent dipoles are present which are oriented in a different direction so in the absence of electric field they orient in different directions and their net dipole moment is zero but whenever you apply the electric field the entire dipole which already present in the dielectric material well comes into the field direction will orient into the field direction and this net dipole moment is not equal to zero hence this polar orient this process is known as orientational polarization and the orientational polarizability can be written as mu square by 3 kt and orientation polarization can be written as n into mu that is equal to n into mu square by 3 kt into e so this is what the orientational polarization and the final one which is called space charge polarization okay so space charge polarization will takes place in the materials which are having multiple phases so here what happens is the ions diffuses through some layers of the materials and they will reach the positive and negative electrodes and this is a very slow process and this type of polarization will be considered as space charge polarization okay hence the total polarization is a combination of electronic polarization ionic polarization orientational polarization and space charge polarization and this space charge polarization is negligible when compared with the electronic ionic and orientational hence this can be written as as a combination of n into 4 pi epsilon naught r cube into e plus e square by omega square into 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 into e and n into mu square by 3 kt into e and this equation the total polarization of a dielectric material this equation can be known as langevin's device equation 
i hope you understood all the different types of polarizations in this session